So the last time we've had you in the studio, we were discussing about the Room to Breathe program, uh, as well as Home Build and a few other things that have been going on. Well, we're two years into a 10-year program, essentially. So last year we finished on a good note and uh, overall 1,329 either new or fully upgraded homes for Indigenous Territorians across the Northern Territory. So that's a, that's a good start for two years into a 10-year program. The Room to Breathe, which is really gathering momentum, the communities are really understanding that now through a good local decision-making consultation process. We've touched on 127 dwellings and uh, improve those dwellings to reduce overcrowding. We've been building government employee houses, we've been building the, uh, the disaster relief houses on, on uh, Elko, for instance. And there's a couple of other categories in the program. <coughs> but completing that two-year cycle gave us a lot of confidence. We're confident the bush is well and truly working with us. One of the, the big stories is that we've achieved around a 42% Indigenous employment target. Wow. And that is, that's great. And everywhere we toured, and Larrakia came with us on a lot of trips, we were able to meet and, and talk to local Indigenous people working you know, on, on the sites. So essentially coming back, we've got a program for this year and beyond. We're going to get stuck back into it again. So for the employment, did that go through the Community Development Program or was that uh, organisations coming in and hiring people people on? Some were compu- like CDP workers that were employed by companies. Others were Indigenous business enterprises and others were straight workers employed by contractors under our bi-local policy, which is we want to see minimum 30% Indigenous employment wherever we issue government work. We want to see local people engaged in every layer of the housing sector. And then in 10 years time, we'll be able to look back and say, yes, we have changed remote Indigenous housing. The last time we spoke, one of the big things that we were talking about was people not just finishing up the job here, but also going on and working at other places with the skills and training that they've learned. Building companies have taken remote uh, community members elsewhere. There's also some examples of uh, mainstream Darwin companies that have picked up people, for instance, from Daly River that were working at Gumbalanya. So there was a combination crew of a, a couple of locals from Gumbalanya and a couple of locals from Daly working together. I think that's fantastic. A lot, a lot of people out there, especially in communities, are finding it difficult, especially with a lot of uh, current economic things going on around Australia, finding jobs and keeping employment. So if this helps, I'm sure they'll be very happy with that. Uh, now, another big thing, of course, was the new buildings as well. With uh, the Commonwealth's program and uh, the Remote Australia strategy, we've got 1,329 either brand new or fully upgraded homes that we've completed. So is that just the NT? That's This is an NT program. Okay, yeah. You bet. Far, far so that's something we're very proud of to finish 2018 and 2019. We're going to be out there building a lot more. That's, sure. That's, that's good news. Out of a local decision-making initiative there, they've said, we don't want to build all these houses in one year. We want to stage them over four years. What does that mean for an Aboriginal young person at Gallowinka? An apprenticeship. Mm. And this relates to four-year and five-year funding agreements so that communities will see this regular rollout of work every year. And that's how they can participate in proper training, apprenticeships. And at the end of this 10-year cycle, there will be Aboriginal companies managing the tenancies, repairing the dwellings, doing room to breathe and customisation extensions and building new homes. So we keep saying the 10-year goal. What is the full expectation after these 10 years? The model that we're focusing in on is not new to Australia in an Australian context, but it's new for the Territory. It's called a community housing model. Mm-hmm. So I was asked this question at Wat Air, and Larrakia came with us on a, on a couple of visits out there. Tumaru Development at Wat Air, they said to me, well, Minister, we are doing tenancy management. Let's get the housing improved. Let's get the system improved in the first five years because the second five years you can look at taking over the asset. Now, if you're a development corporation in a town like Wat Air, 
with over 500 houses to manage, that's a business. Room to breathe and all the other things that have been going on. It's mostly success stories and I think that's great. It's early days. It's early days. And I'm still very much working closely with the department about this cultural shift, local decision making, that even the designs of houses, we're, we're changing that, we're changing the materials. People have got choice. But people in the bush have probably heard a lot about the economic challenges that mm. the Northern Territory government is facing. There's been a real pressure on the economy. I'd just like to say that um, through our remote Indigenous housing program, we're stimulating the Northern Territory economy. The building suppliers, the contractors, the construction agencies, Indigenous business enterprise, they're all churning this very valuable $1.1 billion through our economy. But the most important part about that is the offer is for local people, real wages, real jobs, at home. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, now, a big thing that has occurred uh, very recently uh, is the new ministerial has been appointed. Uh, so there's going to be a whole bunch of new portfolios that are going out and uh, people will be getting uh, basically different areas they'll be working into. What it's called in a political context is a reshuffle. These reshuffles can happen for various reasons. This one was to bring a ninth minister into the cabinet and the Chief Minister appointed Paul Kirby, who's the member for Port Darwin, yep. as the Minister for Primary Industries and Resources. The Chief himself has taken on a couple of new roles, and one is the portfolio of business. So as we talked about the, the economic situation that we're facing in the Territory and the need for these structural changes, he also took on the portfolio of defence support because the Australian Defence Forces are going to be spending a lot of money in the Northern Territory over the next 10 years. Mm. We're talking around $20 billion. So, yeah. so the Chief grabbed that portfolio so that he can be front and centre. So that was a couple of changes. Uh, for Dale Wakefield, Minister Wakefield, who's yep. from Alice Springs, she got a portfolio that's combined with essential services, very important for the bush. That's your water, your power, your sewerage but also we've added an energy portfolio and a renewable portfolio. So it's about looking at renewable energy and the Territory's renewable energy roadmap. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the one-stop shop and it's going to allow for new innovation. I didn't get any changes, Kaim. I'm still in the engine room. They kept me down in the bottom of the ship. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm OK with that, though, because... Was, it, was there any of the uh, ministerial parts that you'd have liked to take on yourself? No, not for me. i am still got grease on my overalls, and uh, we've got a big program to deliver. So, like I said, we're two years into a 10-year program, yeah. and that's not only um, in terms of remote housing. We've got a homelands program we're rolling out, town camps. I've got $25 million investment there we're rolling out. And, of course... I was the beneficiary of another big urban public housing stimulus. So I got $100 million for urban public housing that we're rolling out, improving urban public housing. Perfect. That impacts on a lot of Aboriginal families as well. So, yeah, still in the engine room, but all good. I'm OK. And, and the chief said, keep up the good work and we'll keep rewarding Territorians <laughs> via your departments. Excellent. And now there have been other changes as well. Selena Yubo, Minister Selena Yubo, is a Minister for Indigenous Affairs. Good call. Good uh, call. Yeah, yeah. So she's she's doing great for herself, I think. You bet. And she's been an assistant minister in that role through a subcommittee the chief set up. So we're very much leading the nation in terms of our government set up a uh, it's a subcommittee of cabinet for Indigenous Affairs. So it's a, it's a highest level committee you can create. And Selena Yubo and Chancy Paik were co-chairing that with the with the chief and uh, she's uh, working on some really important items but one of the big ticket items is treaty mm. so we hope to be able to work over the next few years with indigenous territorians to really nail this important aspect of, of reconciliation we do have the largest percentage of aboriginal people living in 
uh, the in, in Australia, not in Australia. It's what is the, the the term again? It is per capita, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. In, in in the jurisdiction, mm. Indigenous Territorians represent one third of our population. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's also Natasha Files. Uh, she's going to be responsible for the Arafura Games. Which I'm sure you're excited for as well. The Arafura Games will be superb, and mm. you'll see a lot of action in Darwin because there'll be a lot of teams, a lot of officials, a lot of tourists from the Asian Perfect, countries. Yeah. And Natasha also picked up the Minister for Disability, which was good to see because the Chief wants a very clear focus on supporting Territorians living with a disability as well. So the other ministerial uh, reshuffle is uh, Deputy Chief Minister Nicole Madison will be Multicultural Affairs. Uh, and finally, Eva Lawler will be the climate change, adding climate change. That's a new one. That's yes. a new one. And that links with environment. This is something that Australia needs to be aware of. And in terms of the territory, there's already some amazing innovation. Look at the West Arnhem fire abatement program. Mm. So paid for by an offshore gas industry, employing ranger programs, doing cool burn which represents 60,000 years of uh, Indigenous science, you know. Sure. Put all that together, that's pretty exciting for the Territory, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining us once again, Minister.